Even though this lesson concerns the C programming language, this lesson, as well as many others in this course, are applicable to just about every programming language. Don't skip this or any other lesson because you think you won't need this material later or you think it doesn't apply to a different programming language you are learning. Every lesson up until now is critical to understand regardless of what programming language you end up deciding to specialize in. In previous lessons, we learned about many of the different ways you can represent a number as binary. We looked at integers, signed integers, that is, integers that can be either positive or negative using a sign bit, and we have some understanding of fractional numbers and how they are stored in binary. We also learned that to store a number in binary, we have to give it a set size, and this size limits us to certain maximum values. For example, if we allocate four bits of storage space, we are limited to numbers no larger than 15. However, if we choose to store a signed number, then we are limited to values of, for example, negative seven to positive seven. So when storing a number in your computer, there are two things you have to decide. First of all, you have to decide how much space or how many bits you are going to allow to store the number. And second of all, you have to decide what kind of number is it. For example, an integer or a signed integer or a fractional number. All of these would be stored differently in binary as you have seen in the previous lessons. Every programming language has a way for you to specify the size in bits that a number will occupy, as well as what kind of number it actually is. In C, there are specific keywords that are used to define these different kinds of numbers and their sizes. We will go over sizes a bit later, but for right now, let's just discuss the different kinds of numbers. So first of all, you have int, which is short for integer, and this refers to a whole number which can be positive or negative. Signed int is the same thing as int. Basically, you have the choice of either a signed int or an unsigned int. If you write just int, that means signed int, which means it has a sign bit, which means you can have positive or negative values. An unsigned int means that you don't have a sign bit and therefore you can only represent positive numbers. And float will support fractional numbers and also has a sign bit so it can be positive or negative. So if you needed to store a value like 7.31, you would use a float. Now I should point out that what we have learned in the previous lesson is only part of the picture about how fractional values work and we will get more into that later. You need to memorize these four data types int, signed int, unsigned int, and float so that you will recognize them and understand them when you see them later. Even though we are talking about the C programming languages, these names of number types are virtually universal across all programming languages. Every compiler is set to allocate a certain number of bits for each data type, and there are a few extra keywords that you can add that will increase or decrease the number of bits allocated for such a number. These values are not universal and may differ between different compilers. So for example, if you want to use more space to store a number, you could use the keyword long in front of it. And if you wanted to use less space to store a number, you could use the keyword short in front of it. Now, I'll explain to you exactly how these keywords work later, but for right now, I just want you to understand that they are a way for you to specify how much space you are allocating for a number. So, 
by specifying the type of data, like int, float, etc., and the size, like long or short, you are able to specify the different kinds of numbers you might want to store. So now, when you see something like unsigned short int total equals 5, it won't be a mystery to you anymore because you will understand that unsigned means there's no sign bit, so it can be only a positive number. Short means that we're going to be allocating less space for the number. Int, of course, means that it is an integer. Total is the name we are giving to this integer. We're assigning it the value of 5. And we'll, of course, go into this in more detail later. So just to recap, the keywords you should now know are int, signed int, unsigned int, float for data types, and then for sizes you should know short and long. If any of this is unclear to you, then please rewatch this lesson.